It's been a year. That dog just given up on him. It only takes one memory, one memory to get him started. Are you be okay? Just you and him? You found it. What can you tell me about Calvin? Why do you ask? I mean, they're exactly the same. He was a genius in this world and beyond. My mind's playing tricks on me. But you're up there all by yourself. I'm not here by myself. You've seen them, haven't you? Seen who? Calvin. He liked to hurt women. Hey. He loves his wounded birds. Loves. Alex! He'll be back. That's the thing about our family. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I am so excited to have with me here today the uh, stars of the brand new film, The Portrait, Natalia Cordova, Buckley, and Ryan Quantin. Hello, everybody. What's going on, guys? How are you? Thank you for having us. It's very cold, and I don't like that. But, it, it, you know, other than that, it's fine. This movie is kind of crazy. Can you tell us a little bit about The Portrait? Do you want to take it, Brian, or should I take it? <laughs> take this one. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll chime in. <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about the film. In, uh, in what way would you uh, like me to speak of the film? Um, well, tell us, there... tell us what it's about. So for oh. people who haven't seen it yet. Well, it's about um, Sophia and Alex, this... Uh, relationship and when he suffers an accident um she fights for a year to try to bring her husband back to who he was suffers a brain injury and in that um year of processing all of this uh she starts to question if where they're at if there's if she's being haunted or is she being violated by uh, an abusive husband or is she losing her mind so it's this uh, braid of three that create this sort of uh, thriller knot that we constantly try to, you know, braid with. Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, uh, an unraveling of both the story and one's mind at the same time. I think that that's a good way to look at that. Uh, can you guys talk about working with one another as well as the rest of this talented, talented cast? Because there's a lot of really talented actors and actresses here, including... Uh, Virginia Madsen and Mark Paul Gosler. Yeah, sure. This look, <clears throat> this is a kind of movie, obviously in the independent world, that doesn't get made without sort of committed, passionate people. And I know Simon had been sort of attached to this. Uh, well, and had, had actually read the story um, from David like over a decade ago. And so this has been something that had been sort of permeating in his mind for, for all that time. And so once the sort of, the right time came which was sort of you know uh last year this this really uh took a life of its own in terms of the people that did get involved were beyond caring about this project and you know my main point of reference for this was natalia you know i, I wasn't going to go to the places that you kind of have to to play uh, an actor that's suffering from a traumatic brain injury unless the the actress that I was uh, opposite with was willing to kind of go to those places. And I knew really quickly, almost instantly that I'd found, you know, my perfect partner in crime in Natalia. 
um you know she aside from doing all the basic fundamental things to the nth degree you know turning up on time knowing you know knowing her lines knowing um being just compassionate and empathetic towards everybody on set knowing everyone's name it was a competition between the two of us to see how quickly we could learn everyone's name like she's that's the type of person you you you're working with and so for me that's just a such a welcome relief and respite because at the end of the day it, it allows us to be as creative and as vulnerable as as we can be as we have to be i love that answer and great job of uh of really hyping up how awesome it was to work with Natalia. that's amazing Natalia, what about you working with uh, this guy over here and as well as the rest of the cast oh um well Thank you, Rai, firstly, for saying that. Um, I feel the same way, as he said. Um, it's not easy to find, it's to find uh, this duality I find in, uh, in, in this industry, uh, a good actor and a good person. Um, it's kind of rare. And exactly what Ryan said is exactly how I feel. I was terrified of... Um, you know, it, 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 this is my first lead role where I, where I, I mean, I've had lead roles in TV shows and stuff like that, but it's more of, of an ensemble cast. I was very scared to go at it on my own or be in every frame. I didn't know if I could carry the film and I got the best partner for that because it, filmmaking is really a team effort. And as actors, sometimes you find people in personal positions where they're not really willing to give and or explore beyond you know the time of action and cut and uh ryan was so wonderful not just as an actor but as a friend and and a partner and our scenes are not easy and he always made me feel safe which is also a very rare thing for a woman in uh, this industry sometimes um then it just made me feel safe physically but he, I, I think one of the most beautiful things you can exchange with any, any human being in, in this world is vulnerability and, and feeling safe in your vulnerability, knowing that that person will hold your space. And that was exactly what Ryan did for me. And I, I say it with no qualms. Um, he's probably the, 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 you know, the best that I've had at that. I, I have, I had yet to find a partner in a, in a process and in a, in a project that was, um, that giving and that kind to the to the cast and crew as far as virginia and mark also terrific people and of course terrific artists i we we all got to work with them much less because um it, it, there were fewer scenes but you know virginia manson is the queen of scream and scary i mean candy man right so it was an honor to work with her to work with a, an actress of that caliber to watch her um I was excited to do so and uh and with Mark I grew up watching him so it was wonderful to see him in in another light in a light that I don't think this industry has has seen him in he's extremely talented and I loved seeing him in this more rugged dirty you know kind of outdoorsy guy uh very different from what we usually see him in or how we know him from saved by the bell um i just loved seeing that and i love that every single girlfriend of mine that i found that found out that i was gonna have a bit of a romantic scene with mark was highly excited because they all had crushes on him when we were young so it all came together in a really lovely way and then the crew you know this this doesn't get made with crews. Films don't get made without crews. Crews to me are the infrastructure of filmmaking. So, um, and they were all superb and wonderful and willing. And Simon is just a dear friend. And uh, like Ryan said, I found partners that I I hope I work with constantly because I find that filmmaking is not just about you know what we said the work, but also behind the scenes what you feel with these people. I love I love that answer. And as a good journalist, I was going to ask you next anyway, but you kind of touched on it working with Simon. How is that? He seems like such a uh, a guy who understands what the vision of what he wants to see is, but he's also willing to allow the artists in front of the camera to play and work within those confines. Can you talk about working with Simon? 
Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's exactly what you said. He knows what he wants. He studies it. And what I loved about him is that we spoke a lot before the weeks prior to shooting. And then he just gave me, and I don't know, Ryan, what he feels about that, but he gave me complete freedom within the boundaries that we had set for each other in terms of where he wanted Sophia, where I wanted Sophia to go. Uh, but he's he's a wonderful uh, director in that sense. He really lets you experiment and sort of um, go with your instinct, with what how you see the character. He re-releases the character onto your hands and that's really special, but always protecting you and, 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 and seeing the performance for you because I don't really like to watch my stuff as I'm doing it. Um, and I, uh, I learned a lot from him and it was a learning curve for, for, for both of us. It was my first, you know, time carrying a film and his first feature film. So he held my space and I held his and we held hands and we had all kinds of <laughs> roller coasters together, but he's a wonderful human being. And I, I can't wait to see what he does with his career. Love that. That's a great answer. Ryan, what about you with your experiences with Simon and working on this project? Well, I, I kind of look at directors as, you know, how are you going to inspire your, you know, your troops, your people? Um, and, you know, uh, Simon has a pretty incredible pedigree in the, um, the short movie realm. Um, and we had won, you know, across the board, all sorts of awards across the world. Um, but this was his first foray into the, the feature world. And the level of preparedness and um, um, his level of being open to other ideas, but even just his um, choice of talent, who he, he brought on. Um, you know, the, the movie is called The Portrait, so it was important for all of us, like, who were we going to get to to do these portraits? And so he found this lovely English lady, Fipsy Saloon, who was just, you know, extraordinary. Those those portraits, like, seeing them on screen is one thing, but seeing them in person, they really did sort of come out at you. They had sort of a, another life to them. And then we had uh, Luke Hanlin, our cinematographer, um coco costume designer like across the board lawrence humphreys like our production designer these these guys you know we really it, it, it was on a shoestring budget but we made it look like it was a um you know a, a proper sort of hollywood film and, and they you know you really have to rely on talented people so simon did a really smart job of of hiring the right people to sort of see forth this vision um and he has you know, he's a perfectionist, which, you know, it, it, it can be hard to deal with those kind of people in an independent world when you have only so many days um, and so many hours in, the, in those days. But, um, you know, he was willing to let to, to sort of compromise and to let certain things go and and willing to sort of put up a fight for things that um, meant a lot to him. And that means a lot to to actors like us when we're fighting for you know, there was a time halfway through the movie that Natalia and I pitched him an idea of um, we really felt it was necessary to add this particular scene. And he and David kind of thought about it. And then the next day sort of said, you know what, you, you guys are right. Let's let's see what we can do with this. Like that kind of stuff, you know, when you're dealing with, you know, time and money doesn't doesn't happen. So to have that level of um, perfectionism, but combined with a, a level of, you know what, maybe there is a way where we can make this even better that's why i that's why i just love working in an independent movie because you you do get the chance to make those sort of moves that you know on your typical kind of hollywood uh feast you, you just don't get they're, they're pretty set in stone with their ideas i i love that and then i i love that that what i said was correct and i did that solely based on watching the film uh and and i think that it really comes through on screen I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about yourselves because I always like to do that anytime I interview someone for the first time. And this is the first time that I've had you guys in front of me. So the first question I always ask is, who are some people that inspire you? Oh, wow. uh, sorry, inspire me in... in, uh, in Professionally, in this... personally, whatever. Oh, great. You want to go first, Natalia? 
Sure. Um, I'm just going to name Nina Simone, Nelson Mandela, Frida Kahlo, uh, Edith Piaf. Um, oh my God. Uh, Noam Chomsky. Um, I mean, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I don't know. Rulfo. Um, there's, there's, I mean, I could name thousands of people. That's what life is about. You know, I, just, I love that yeah. you named Frida Kahlo because you voiced Frida Kahlo as well. Yeah, that was a, a gift from the heavens to get to voice <laughs> such a big idol of mine for sure. I love that. And then Ryan? Um, I, look, I, I, I love my books and my movies and, and there's obviously, you know, filmmakers and actors that sort of fall part of it. But um, as I get older, man, I kind of learned to look for inspiration and sometimes even in the strangest of places, um, you know, whether it's I, I, I live in Venice and, you know, whether it's a, a chance meeting with, a you know, like a, a homeless guy, whether whether it's. You know, I think there's inspiration to be found everywhere. It doesn't have to be a, a, a work of art for you to be inspired by or for you to find um, something to be uplifted by. So I don't know. I, it, for me, it's an ever-changing, ever-evolving um, set of uh, opportunities. I, again. I, I changed again. my answer to Ryan's. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you've met, you guys have made it easy on me because my next question does have to do with movies, of course. And it's the hardest question I'm going to ask you all day. If you had to watch two movies for the rest of your life, what two are you picking and why? I'm so sorry. You're welcome. Oh, Lord. Oh, that's the toughest question ever. It's like asking me what book I would take to an island. I... Oh, I have no idea. This is coming to me now, but I'm going, um, Life is Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, what Roberto Benigni did with that. And just the power of the imagination to kind of overcome reminded me very much of Viktor Frankl's book. Um, but also, this is just a, a personal one, The Endless Summer. You know, my dad had me convinced and all my friends that he was the, the one of the leads in this particular movie for <laughs> quite a few years uh, that has a personal kind of stake in it for me sorry natalia didn't mean to cut you off oh no 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 go ahead love i've given giving you some time to, to... i know i'm <laughs> uh, i'm thinking i'm trying to because you know uh, this question sometimes our favorite films are not the films we would watch all the time right um that's a different thing um you know, there, there's there's very favorite films of mine that are too difficult for me to watch over and over because they're, um, I mean, they they impact you pretty uh, profoundly. But um, I guess if I'm gonna go with like a movie and it, that I've watched a lot and that sort of um, embedded itself into my soul in terms of seeing myself as this character when I was younger and sort of taking uh, acceptance of myself through it, it would be the way we were. Um, Barbara Streisand and Robert Redford, um, the KKK Katie character really helped me, really helped tell to tell me that it was okay to be the kind of uh, girl or woman that I was, that it was okay to speak like men speak and of the topics that men speak and um, and to always be brave enough to say what you think and to not let uh, the indoctrinations or conditionings of the matrix to sort of erase your authenticity. So, you know, my favorite film of all time is The Music Box, but um, but I would say that I would probably not watch The Music Box as much as I've watched, sorry, The Music Room, not The Music Box, The Music Room, Um, but I would never watch it as much as I've watched The Way We Were, so I think definitely The Way We Were. I like that. You know you get a second one, right? Sorry? You get two movies, so you got The oh. Way We Were. And I guess I'll say uh, The Music Room. Yeah, see, I, I like the I like the way we were. We just spoke about it on our on my on our podcast really? that connects to this. Yes, we were talking about the movies of the nineteen seventies, and each one of us picked a year and talked about that year. And so we just talked about the way we were and how fantastic it is. So I love that you picked that. Uh, 
Guys, it's been a oh, pleasure talking. Uh, they should make a remake of that. Well, no one can touch those two actors nowadays, I think, but oof, it's so good. You, you don't want to remake those movies. The 70s for me is one of the most untouchable periods of time for American cinema. A lot of the movies that came out then, uh, you, you can't remake them. I mean, you, yeah. they've tried to, but they're such a part of the zeitgeist of that se- of that century and of that time period in filmmaking that, that you can't remake them. And I, I, I that's what I love about talking about that decade in particular uh that's why it's so much fun i I just wanted to 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 thank you guys for for your time obviously and for talking about this movie is there anything you want to lead the audience with before i let you go just uh watch the film uh as ryan said uh independent filmmaking is wonderful and i think it's really the cradle of filmmaking and um, we've got to support it and I hope that this film uh, sends the message to all those filmmaking dreamers out there that you can make a film in 20 days with a very low budget when you love what you do when you work hard for it when you know what you're doing and when you choose people like me and Ryan (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and I would add too, like we see enough movies where you've kind of forgotten about them by the time the credits roll. I feel like part of the allure of this is that you're thinking about it long after the credits have rolled and um, it stays with you. And that's the sign or the hallmark of a a good psychological um, horror is how it manages to ooze its way into your psyche. I would agree. This one stuck with me at least for two to three days after I watched it. And that doesn't happen very often. So I see so much stuff. It doesn't happen so much. So thank you guys so much. Yeah. See, that's what, that's the point of making something like this. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much. Natalia, gracias por llamar conmigo. Ay, gracias a ti. No sabía que hablabas español. Well, they didn't tell me I could do it. So (laughs) I went with English because it's a lot, you know, it's easier for my audience to interpret it. But yeah, see, hablamos español completamente, yeah. (laughs) but thank you guys so much i appreciate you guys have a wonderful rest of your day you too thank you